Assalamu alaikum students. Um, uh, in the last lecture we discussed uh, the light and the phenomena of reflection of light. Now here in this uh, very lecture we are going to discuss the laws of reflection of light about which I already have introduced uh, the diagram of which I ha already have introduced. So the laws of reflection of light we discussed uh, it is a plane surface, it is an incident ray, this is a reflected ray, this is a normal fine. Now the first law of reflection states first law of reflection of light states that the angle between the incident ray and the normal that is angle of incidence angle of incidence. The angle between the incident ray and the normal that is angle of incidence is always equal to the angle made by reflected ray with the normal that is angle of reflection. So in simple terms the law is the angle of reflection is always equal to the angle of incidence that is angle made by the incident ray with the normal will always be equal to the angle made by the reflected ray with the normal. So we can write the statement of the law here as the angle of incidence yeah, angle of reflection is always equal to the angle of incidence fine so this very angle represented by angle r or simply you can write r and this very angle angle i or simply i they are always equal that is when the ray of light comes from a source strikes the surface it would certainly make an angle with the normal and that angle will be exactly equal to angle made by the reflected ray with the normal. You can simply test this um, uh, this very law by simply putting the laser light on the on any smooth surface like plane mirror and you would get the reflected ray the point where this laser right light strikes treat it as angle of uh, sorry point of incidence like it strikes here to treat it as point of incidence and draw an imaginary normal there you would clearly get that the angle between the incident ray and the normal is always equal to the angle made by reflected ray with the normal. <laughs> So the angle of reflection is always equal to the angle of incidence. This is the first law. So we can write it as angle I is equal to angle R. Fine. Now as far as examination point of view is concerned, uh, sometimes it may be asked in long answer type questions. How would you write in, uh, in that very exam? You would simply explain the law. First you would explain the figure by giving names to these rays like let it be SO incident ray, OP reflected ray, ON normal. Fine. You would explain this figure. Then uh, write then while you write the law first law of reflection you would write the statement first the angle of reflection is always equal to the angle of incidence then you would write for example you would give an example that if the angle of incidence is 45 degree the angle of reflection would also be 45 degree fine this is how you elaborate the question how you it how you make it worth of getting the full marks then you would put another diagram showing the same like this is incident ray this is reflected ray this is normal this angle of incidence is 45 degree this angle of reflection is also 45 degree 
fine so this is the law that uh, the angle made by the incident ray with the normal is always equal to the angle made by the reflected ray with the normal fine so you can see it in the diagram here that the angle made by the incident ray with the normal is always equal to the angle made by the reflected ray with the normal fine okay so this is the first law of reflection and angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection and by quoting the example and drawing another figure in order to get the four marks in order to explain the law fully fine okay <laughs> now second law second law of reflection states the incident ray the incident ray, the reflected ray and the normal to the point of incidence, the incident ray, the reflected ray and the normal to the point of incidence all lie in the same plane. Now what does that mean? The incident ray, the reflected ray, the normal all lie in the same plane. In order to explain this law, I would simply give you an example. The surface, the incident ray is on the surface of board, isn't it? This incident ray in this very diagram, this incident ray is on the surface of board, fine. The reflected ray is also on the surface of board, isn't it? If I draw the normal like this. If I draw the normal like this, normal is perpendicular to the point of incidence. So if it would be like this, it is also normal. Isn't it a perpendicular to the point of incidence? Isn't it a perpend is it isn't it at 90 degree to the point O? Yes, it is. But this surface, this normal has occupied, it is this surface. It is this surface, surface in air, where the incident ray lies. It lies on the surface of uh, board, reflected rays on the surface of board. But where is the normal? The normal is in the surface of air. So here we are wrong. We cannot measure now the angle of incidence. We cannot have angle of reflection now. So we have to put normal as well on the surface of board. Now you can have angle of incidence, you can have angle of reflection. Are you getting it? So simply, if the incident ray lies in any surface, it lies in this surface, the reflected ray should also be in this surface and the normal should also be there in this surface, fine? So the incident ray, the reflected ray and the normal to the point of incidence all lie in the same plane. So I would write the law, the incident ray comma the reflected ray and the normal to the point of incidence all lie in the same plane all lie in the same plane here the plane is board the incident ray lies on the surface of board, the reflected ray lies on the surface of board and the normal also lie on the surface of board, fine. Now, you have drawn this diagram on your respective notebooks. Now, if you have to quote the example, for example, you would explain this law with the help of example by drawing this very figure on your notebook. What would be the surface then? Just think for a while. What would be the surface then? If you are drawing this very diagram on your paper, fine. So what would be the plane? The incident ray would be on the plane of paper, the reflected ray would be on the plane of paper and the normal would also be on the plane of paper. So I hope you now got what the plane is. We are talking about the surface here. The surface on which the incident ray lies, the reflected ray should also lie on the same surface and the normal should also be there on the same surface. So you can write the example by drawing the figure like this.
the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal like incident ray so reflected ray op normal on all lie in the plane of paper on your notebook here it lies in the plane of board so we can measure these angles angle of incidence and angle of reflection fine okay so these are the uh, laws of reflection the first law states that the angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection and the second law states that the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal to the point of incidence all lie in the same plane so sometimes you would see on various materials notes or maybe some books that they quote the third law as the incident ray the reflected ray lie on either side of the normal the incident ray the reflected ray lie on either side of normal you can add it as uh, the uh, subtopic the uh, after second law of after stating second law of reflection but uh, it's better not to add, add it as third law of reflection so the incident ray this ray reflected ray and the normal lie on either side of the normal fine lie on either side of the normal the incidental ray lies on the one side and the reflected ray uh, lies on the other side of the normal why i said that uh, don't it as the third law because here we have an exception and it's very important to note when the ray of light is incident on the mirror when the ray of light is incident on the mirror in such a way this is like normal this is the incident ray when the ray of light is incident on the mirror in such a way in such a way that it coincides with the normal that it coincides with the normal or it is perpendicular to the mirror it's making an angle of 90 degree with the mirror isn't it it's making an angle of 0 or 180 with the normal isn't it so you can state in both ways if the ray of light is incident on the mirror in such a way that it's it coincides with the normal or it is incident on the mirror at 90 degrees the reflected ray follows the same path the reflected ray retraces its path that is where from the incident ray had come the reflected ray also goes back on the same path so all the three all the three the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal though they lie in the same plane but they coincide all the three coincides there is nothing like the incident ray is on one side of the normal as i stated before that the reflected ray is on other side of the normal fine like this this is incident ray this is reflected ray fine the incident ray is on one side of the normal and the reflected ray is on the other side of the normal here we see the reflection occurs the incident ray coincides with the normal the reflected ray also coincides with the normal so here the angle of incidence is here the angle of incidence is what is angle of incidence angle made by incident ray with the normal the angle of incidence here is angle made by incident ray with the normal it is it is either 0 or 180 degree so angle of reflection would also be 0 got it so we can say in most of the cases that the incident ray and the reflected ray lie on either side of the normal but there is a special case it's a special case that if the incident ray is strikes the mirror in such a way that it is perpendicular to the mirror here it is perpendicular to the mirror it coincides with the normal 
it makes an angle of zero it makes an angle of zero degree with, with the normal it makes an angle of 90 degree with the mirror 90 degree with the mirror zero with the normal so the reflected ray also goes back through the same path making an making an angle of zero degree with the normal or 90 degree with the mirror fine so that's why I wrote, I said that don't treat it as third law that incident ray, reflected ray lie on either side of the normal. It's a statement, but here we have a special case about it that incident ray, reflected ray and the normal, they coincide. They coincide only in one condition when the incident ray is, when the incident ray coincides with the normal. Fine. Okay, we can draw the same diagram like this. This is a mirror, fine. This is a normal diagram. Here it is normal, it's incident ray, it's a reflected ray, fine. So here the special case is, this is incident ray, fine. Striking the mirror at 90 degree. Here the incident ray is striking the mirror at some angle, fine. Here the incident ray is striking the mirror at 90 degree or it coincides with the normal, fine. The reflected ray would also go through the same path, making an angle of zero degree with the normal, fine. So this is the special case of law of reflection. So let's recapitulate the laws of reflection. The first law of reflection is the incident ray, the reflected ray and the normal to the point of incidence all lie in the same plane. The other law is angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection, fine. And the other thing, the special case we discussed where the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection is equal to 0 degree or 180, fine. So here the special case is when it is perpendicular to the mirror, mirror or it is it coincides with the normal, fine. So these are the laws of reflection. But remember one thing when you um, explain these laws, when you write these laws in your examination, make sure that the diagram is neat and clean and it is made on around one full page so that the various angles, rays, point of incidence, they are clearly visible. Okay, thank you. We will discuss the next topic in our next lecture. Thank you.